What's going on, YouTube? You're back with Shades. We're continuing our Let's Play of 1,000 Lies. Last time we left off, we found that the sender was Claire. I mean, it fits. Kind of sort of. She's really weird. She can be poetic when she wants to be. And my mouth is orange because I was eating Doritos. But yeah. I'm not sure if she was telling the truth or not. She could have been lying because, like... We told her about the emails, and she, well, you know, is weird. But anyway, let's move on. I already told you, it's purposeful. Seriously? All those changes between right, left, white, black, tall, and short? I think you're just trying to look intelligent without real clue as to what you're doing. That could also be it, but, you know, I like giving people the benefit of the doubt. It had to be, con it had to be, it had to be contrasting. Why do you care about what I do or don't write? It had already been a while since our first meeting in the library began, and to no one's surprise, it's the last thing we're doing. The last thing we're doing is getting work done. It's more like we're having an argument that will never end. And by argument, I mean that Luz is on the offensive toward me with the toughness and strictness of a court martial. It's not like this kind of treatment matters to me, anyways. And considering that my mind is distracted by other thoughts right now, you could say that I'm taking it in stride. It only matters to upset Luz, who continues sarcastically questioning me about everything that comes to her mind. She, of course, doesn't know anything about the email or the sender, which somehow helps me to forget about the outside world, as if this library is a bubble that it, that's impervious to everything outside of it. And why is a wolf the main character? It's normal to have animals in fairy tales, but a wolf? Because I like wolves. Do you have any? Do you have an issue with that? Not to mention that wolves have always been closely associated with the sun, moon, and all of those things, so it's relevant. Yes, but you know, wolves are usually the villains in fairy tales. They eat sheep and make life impossible for shepherds and pigs. Hey, he can make the main character whatever he wants. Like, the one thing about giving critiques, and this goes to anyone out there who's like working to, wants to do anything in creative writing or things like that. Um, like, you can make the main character whatever you want, so long as it makes sense and works for the story. Um, so far, like, this is only chapter one, so we don't know how far it's gonna go as far as the wolf is gonna make sure. Lewis is like, you need to go with standards. No, you don't have to. You gotta make it weird. Because when you make it weird, it keeps it interesting. And so far, his story, first chapter alone, is interesting. I'm gonna keep it at that, though. From the sheep's point of view, the shepherd is only a wolf in sheep's clothing, don't you think? Confirmed, you're just a pretentious hipster. Go grab your MacBook and go to Starbucks already and don't come back here. This is what you don't do when you critique someone. This is what you don't do. Like, there are certain expectations that people have for writers. This shouldn't be it. Like, what he's going for is poetic. It's a poetic mythos that he's trying to create. And while it may not be good or bad, like where he's going is interesting. Let him do it. It was you who insisted on us working together. What do you plan to do after this? Illustrate my fairy tale? Make a graphic novel out of it? I don't know, we can figure that out later. For now, just having some references is okay. All I want is motivation for me to continue improving. You aren't taking it very seriously. Or maybe you're overdoing it. It seems like you're more interested in making the critics happy than the readers. You're only right for myself. I'm not interested in competitions. It's not like I write to win, any or, win or gain anything. That's how losers talk. Stop joking. I've already told you that writing is, is like a necessity to me. Everything else is secondary. Trying to sound interesting again? Why would writing be a necessity at all? The heck are you talking about? Are you going to force me to tell you with one of those requirements of yours, or maybe with some of your twisted rhetoric? Luz, who up till now never took her eyes off me, leans back against her seat, puffs her cheeks out, and then smirks at me. No, not this time. I think it would be a lot more fun if I tried to find it out on my own. Her attitude makes me suspicious of the real meaning behind her words. However, I choose to forget about it. For now. Do what you want, it's not like I'll tell you even if you're right. Oh yes you will. What makes you think that? Because you're fair, and that attitude that and that's the attitude that that, that justice demands. I sneak a peek, genuinely perplexed as this is the first time I've ever been praised by her. Don't delude yourself. Over time I've learned that, that being fair is more of a flaw than a virtue, I can tell you firsthand. Somehow she manages to transform flattery into an insult, but looking at her, it's difficult to tell if it was intentional or not on her part. I keep staring at her while she tries to draw something, not really thinking about anything, as if I'm trying to scrutinize her different expressions. Focused on the sheet of paper, she tries to ignore me. Little by little, she grows nervous to the point where her pencil snaps. Are you going to stare at me all day? I'm not really inspired, to tell you the truth. 
You haven't even tried to open your notebook yet. How can you know if you don't try? I mean, in all honesty, um, if someone chooses to be a writer, you should be like getting into the habit of doing it on a regular basis. Every day, every other day, for an hour, maybe two. Write nonsense, write trash, write something. Because the more your mind gets used to it, the more you're able to like put something on the page, really. Like you don't need to, what you put on the page doesn't even have to be good. It just has to be put on the page. Because like when you have something on the page, you have something that you can revise, that you can edit, that you can make again and again and again and make it better. That's what you got to do. One can sense these things. I'm also running out of pages and I don't want to waste them. I've already told you that I'm more into letting the story write itself. All right, we're done here. Let's go somewhere else and take a break. We haven't even started. Break, period. I need some, we both need some fresh air. Do you have any other plans? I don't share Luz's enthusiasm, as she gets up noisily as possible in the process, but when confronted by the question from her, I can't help but remember the mall and everything that happened before I got here. She seems to notice that I'm thinking and interrogates me about it to the point where I'm forced to talk about the movie I saw, in such a way that distracts from pressing me about my plans before the library. Did you watch the movie or not? Well, I can't say watched, in theory yes, but I honestly can't say it. Then let's go, I haven't watched it either. What? Come on, let's go, let's go. Are we going on a date We leave the library before I can even blink, and before I realize it, we're watching the movie, but this time the theater isn't empty. But when it comes to understanding what's going on on the screen, I can't really understand anything, because Luce is sitting next to me. I'm nervous, not for the reasons one would expect, but because of Luce's unceasing and penetrating laughter. It's almost like she's having a seizure while laughing, causing her to drop her popcorn and spill her drink on me as collateral damage. The worst part is that it's, this is supposed to be a horror movie. Note to self, don't watch pe movies with energetic people. But then again, I'm also the kind of person that laughs. I remember one time, um, me and my friends went to a movie. We were watching Big Hero 6, and uh, two of my friends were dating at the time. They'd broken up now, but they were dating at the time. And uh, they went to sit by themselves. I think they went to sit at the very back of the uh, theater where they could just like look at the t TV screen. And me and the rest of our friends uh, sat near the front. I think we were like the third row from the front. Not not close enough where our necks were, were about to snap, but but close enough where like it was uncomfortable. So, during the funny parts of Big Hero Six, I laughed my ass off, and um, let it be known that I often um, stifle my laughter in these recordings. I don't want to clip the mic, and I don't want to bother my roommates, especially since I record typically at night. Uh, so, um, I my my true laugh, my uncontrollable laugh, is very very loud. Uh, and my friends were, who, my, my the, the pair who sat in the back, were able to hear me clearly above everyone else. How awful is that? Um, it's not, it doesn't make me hate my laugh. I mean, I already hate my laugh, but you know, I have to deal with it. Um, but like, it's just a funny anecdote that like my laugh is that loud. Anyway, are you listening? I didn't receive any messages, so I don't know if anyone else is coming or not. Do you mind waiting while Oz and I go take a look? Earth to Endian. Why such interest in the committee, Ziva? And why did you want Oz and me to join it with you? You're annoying, Endian. I already told you, I've told you millions of times already. Yes, it's true, I may have lied a little about convincing the teachers to help you, but there's no hidden motive. It's too much work for me alone to do, and you guys have fun, are fun to have around. You shouldn't complain about... You shouldn't complain after how much I've helped you with loose with loose. I dedicated a sharp look to to the imperturbable Siva. That's a new word. I know what it means, but it's the new word to say out loud. <clears throat> Excuse me. Finally, I give up, scratch the back of my neck, and then walk into the classroom situated behind me. Don't take too long. <laughs> Our group was once again visiting. And Anate Institute in order to establish the damn committee once and for all. I take my seat in a familiar spot, resting my back against the chair and forcing it to stand on two of its legs with my own legs now on top of the desk. I lose track of time as I look at the ceiling and acrobatically twirl a pen between my fingers. Eventually, the door to the classroom finally opens again. Huh, you're back already. I stretch my neck and try to peer at the doorway only to find someone totally unexpected. So much so, in fact, that it causes me to drop the chair to its original position. Well then, also there's no music. Why? Sierra, I finally found you. Claire excitedly walks over to me. You told me to join the committee, but I didn't know where, where or when it was. Luckily I heard that you guys were be meeting today, so I've been looking everywhere for it. I didn't miss anything, right? 
Her little hands hold mine, shaking them to greet me, but I can't find the words to speak with her after what happened in our last encounter. What's that face for? Is it the time of the month? What are you even saying? I angrily break free from her hold. I'm joking, I know you guys don't have those. Why do you look so concerned? Don't tell me that I've had a nerve. Have you held deep within you have you held deep within you all this time the hidden desire to become a woman? What do you want from me, Claire? Why did you tell me sooner? Why did you have to hide the fact that those emails were sent by you? So that's the issue. Don't be silly, Sierra. Silly? Silly? A stranger that somehow knew my email address started sending me threatening messages. Then I started having coincidental encounters with you, and now you're playing dumb as if nothing ever happened even though you admitted to doing it. How is that silly? A stranger? So that's what it's come to. Claire takes a deep breath and places her hands on her waist. I've never hidden anything from you, Sierra, nor lied to you. As soon as the topic came up, I told you, and I don't regret any of it, not even a little bit. It was you, after all, who made me take the first step. I did what? Wait, all that stuff you were saying the first time we met at the pond about your resolution, it was referring to me? Exactly. Although I sent the first email, I didn't really feel truly prepared, but once it all started, I couldn't leave it half-baked. You always end up wondering if what you did was the right call, but no matter how hard the decision may be, you have to accept it, no matter the consequences. And what are you trying to get? What do you want from me? What did I do to you that to cause this sudden interest in me? Maybe magic? That's what I like to believe. I want to know you, Sierra, and know who you are and stay by your side. Don't you think that under any other motivation, I would have had 1,000 other better ways to go about do about everything? A thousand, huh? A thousand lies. Title drop. I want the truth, and the truth that I, can, I still can't define. After all, to me, the most important thing is that you're truthful. Truthful? What does that have to do with being truthful? How do you know what that you aren't the one lying? You can't know that, Sierra. Nobody can. However, you can choose what to believe. And I still believe in those prideful words which you told me that you wouldn't regret inviting me here. Tell me, Claire. No tricks are messing around. I want the truth. All of this is... All of this is because you're in love with me? I don't know, but I'd like to believe that it was love at first sight. Wouldn't it become a perfect story that way? I'm getting a stalker vibe from this. Anyone else? Anyone else? This is so stalkery. I I can't. The world suddenly begins seems to begin spinning at a double at its normal pace. I have too many questions with blurred answers of no value or resolution. Flee, get away from her, forget her, make her disappear. Both of those are logical ideas that come to mind. But then there's Claire, slightly embarrassed and hiding under her, the brim of her hat, with a charming giggle easing all of my doubts. I have an answer prepared on my lips, but I'm interrupted by the always ready to pester me in entourage. We're here because we came. Ah! Police! Legs up! What the heck are you doing now, Oz? There's someone with Endian. It's a girl! Twit and Dimwit pop up at the best possible time, and immediately they react to my surprising companion. Oh, you must be Sierra's fan friends, the idiot and the witch, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, it's just a little girl. False alarm. Deactivating potential hot analysis radar. Wait, did she just insult us? And you, you know it's a crime that you know that's a crime to get with minors, right? I never would have expected this fetish from you. And telling her lies about us too. You got what you deserved, so stop complaining. For starters, this girl is the same age as you. She's. I pause for a second during the introduction. Both Ziva and Oz look at me curiously, and Clara positions her face to gaze at me, preparing herself for whatever it is I may say about her and the consequences of such. This is Claire Ar Argerus, a friend. She's thought as a here Ente, Anate, and Anate, I don't know how to pronounce that. So I proposed that she could join us with this committee thing, and she accepted. Wow, really? Now that you mention it, she does seem familiar. Maybe from when I was studying here. Nice to meet you, Claire. I'm Ziva Shiani. And the guy standing next to me is named Oz Aldwin. I think this game takes place somewhere in like Europe, if I remember if I know correctly. Like I was wrong thinking it was in Japan or something. Like it's definitely in Europe. I don't know where though. I could look it up, but I'm not gonna. Oz? Tell me it isn't true, compañero. This girl can't be the same age as me. You're ruining everything I've ever believed in. All of my standards. I love hot women of all different body types and fashion styles, but I've always avoided eating the unripened fruits as a gesture of my gallantry as a gentleman. If you show me such a creature that is born of both worlds, what should I believe from now on? What now stops me from becoming a monster? 
There shouldn't be a god capable of such creation. <laughs> Why? Seriously, Oz, take up poetry. If you naturally talk like this, you need to take up poetry. You need to. I sound like my professor. Disgusting. See, an idiot. I told you so. Certainly, even more than I'd expected. Hey, Sierra, it was unnecessary, but I'm thankful you didn't tell them everything about me. With Oz making a ruckus in the background and Ziva trying to stop him, I can't help but sigh after Claire's words. I didn't want to break that which I, I alone made, nothing more. Consider this a truce, but there's still more I want to know, okay? That's okay. Especially when there's things I want to know about you too, Sierra. As soon as she finishes her sentence, Claire introduces herself to her new colleagues and I stay out of it. Did I do the right thing? I don't know. It seems like I'll never know what's going on whenever she's nearby. Oh, one more thing, Sierra. Don't ever put your nasty feet on my desk again. I have to learn there, you know. This is your desk? I'm, but I'm sure that'll never be anything good. Hmm. Taking some random chairs, we sit in what appears to be a circle, situated close to the blackboard. Ziva tells us that they managed to find Luz and that she'll be here in a minute, and she's, it's precisely as we're talking about her that the door opens. Hello, everyone. Sorry for the, um, wait. As exhausted Lu uh, an exhausted Luz opens the classroom door, she's pulling the arm of someone I'm un unable to see. They seem to be arguing about something in hushed whispers, making the atmosphere heavier for each extra second to make us wait. My classmate here had some issues and asked me to come to the committee alone again today. However, we managed to resolve the problem in time and he agreed to come here by himself. Right? New person? I'm excited when I meet new characters. Luz addresses the figure on the other side of the door, who's making it hard for her to get inside the classroom. Everyone else in the room shares the same foreign feeling from, from watching the scene unfold, except for Ziva, who scratches her head bashfully as she, if she already knew that something like this was going to happen. The unknown person finally makes their way inside the slow, with slow, heavy steps. His hands are tucked inside his pockets, and he lets out a loud yawn. Ziva already knows him, but allow me to introduce him anyways. This guy is Dinez de Cruz. Dinez? Din I'm going to say Dinez. Dinez, these guys are from Duane for the committee. Spain. It has to be Spain. He doesn't have a character model? That's bullshit. That's bull. I was hoping we get like more character models. Whatever. Fine. I don't care. Dinez greets us by raising one of his arms in a slow, deliberate gesture. His, his stooped back, scruffy hair, bags under his eyes, and wrinkled shirt give off a careless first impression. His eyes shoot around the room, sensitive to the light. He blinks as if waking from an uncomfortable dream until they finally settle on me, followed by a clumsy greeting to us. Oh! Never mind, he has one. Um. Hey. I see that you're looking as bad as always, Diz. Did you try to duck out? You can at least greet everyone properly. Don't be such a lazy ass. A pleasure for you to meet me, Din Diniz. If you're Ziva's friend, then I'll allow you to be my friend too. My name is Oz, and my compañero here is Sierra. But everyone calls him Sierra because it's shorter to say. What's up, Sierra? How's it going? His greeting catches me by surprise. He's giving me beaming gaze that makes it difficult to guess his intentions. Um, I guess I can't complain. How are you? Excluding the fact that I've been trying to run away from a certain lady who wanted to bring me here, dead or alive. I'm perfectly fine. Better than ever, I dare say. I don't know what you mean, Diz. You came here all by yourself, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, whatever. How long is gonna, this thing going to take anyways? I'll remind you that you accepted without complaint when I asked you to join. I don't even remember. I probably accepted so you'd shut up, just like I did when, with Luce. You girls can be such a pain in the ass sometimes. Have you no shame? Dinez seemed to fit in with the group pretty quickly, because probably because he already knows most of its members. <laughs> I, meanwhile, take a look at the le my left towards Claire, who has her eyes to the floor as she plays with the end of her skirt, just like I always saw her do at the in the recent past when she was nervous. What's wrong? You look pale. Luz and Dinez are both from the school, yet neither of them are in your class. Not at all. We're in the same grade, but different homerooms. I know Diniz, but he, I doubt he recognizes me. I'm not the kind of person who gets too much attention anyways, you know? Claire is unsuccessful in trying to appear composed. I know she isn't a sociable person, but that's precisely why I invited her to come here in the first place. Still, it's really hard to believe that the strange girl who never shuts up can be so different from the others. I forgot to say hi to you, Claire. Did they force you to come here too? Sierra in invited me. C Sierra in invited me. Everything happened so quickly. I'm sorry for not telling anyone. 
Don't worry, girl. Dennis is supposed to be in charge of this committee. It's his fault for not paying attention. And that's my timer. Um, I think I'm gonna end it here. It's not the most awkward place, but I really do need to record more parts for today. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, this is turning out really interesting. I'm really glad I get to play this. It's really fun. It's really interesting. But anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.